So thank you uh, for the, the, the introduction and for having me. So when I was preparing for this presentation, I was thinking about how to condense my five-year thesis research into 10 minutes. So bus service reliability is such a great topic and I can spend hours talking about it. However, why is this topic so important today? Reliability is a critical component of public transportation. Over the past few years, technological advances allowed um, real-time tracking, cheap storage systems, and computational processing, artificial intelligence algorithms to deal with high-dimensional data, a set of new techniques for explainable AI protocols and standards to exchange transit data. All those tools have led us to a, a new generation of uh, discussion around transit service reliability. So our study combines cutting edge techniques to provide a new look at essential studies in the field. So our primary focus is to model the transit data from Sao Paulo and through explainable artificial intelligence, uh, quantify and identify factors or features impacting bus service reliability. So the main question is, what are the impacts and how to quantify that? Although many factors uh, uh, are listed uh, in the literature, we do not know how they influence and how do they interact among them. So what are the most relevant factors, how to obtain insights from them, and what are the, the main difference per service frequency? And, uh, and is it possible to build a framework for the multiple uh, level reliability problem, for example. So we can rephrase it as, is it possible to tell the same story from the bus stop to the transit system level only by aggregating data? So. Sorry. So let's see the size of our problem. Uh, Sao Paulo is a metropolis located in Brazil with 11 million people. So the transit system is heavily based and has 1,300 buses, approximately 14,000 vehicles and 6 million passengers per day. So approximately one Canada per week and more than 4,000 kilometer, uh, kilometers road grade. So Sao Paulo is the most unequal city in Brazil by the 2019 ranking uh, when analyzing accessibility within 30 minutes walking. So the Palma ratio is the, the ratio of the wealthiest 10% uh, of the population's uh, gross national income divided by the poorest 40% share. So when you look at the origin destination chart, most trips cross essentially region nine. So it is the central region, which is the critical hub connection to other regions in the city. So region nine also comprise the, the, the financial district and most of the job opportunities. So we downloaded the historic data from January to September 2017 from all roads and vehicles uh, every 20 seconds. So which means more than 15 million trips. To deal with this vast data amount, we needed to develop several techniques. Many transit agents worldwide are collecting data and they struggle to find skilled people and the best technology to work with high dimensional data at scale. So we develop a framework to, to work with large, large scale data. So the first step is to determine the data structure and architecture. So we apply parallel paradigm and distributed architecture to model the transit system as a graph network. Uh, the nodes were control point, control points and uh, for example, bus stop or any arbitrary point in the road. And the route segments are links. Uh, we ran an interpolation uh, on the travel time and also computed the distance between two nodes. So next, we developed some algorithms to identify the bus motion, um, missing trips, and identify bus on, uh, on depot. And we also computed the headway for pairs of buses and excluding weekends and holidays. And the exploratory data analysis showed that the headway and travel time variables were a stationary process when looking at the day, week, and month scale. So, but not for the hour. 
So we choose to work with daily aggregation and we choose to vary uh, the, 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 the space, so spatially. Then we selected the weight and travel time measures. So we divide them into types. So measures containing mean or median, such as expected wait time and 95th percentile and those uh, that capture only the delta variation, such as excess wait time, potential wait time and reliability buffer time. So next we run six algorithms. So linear regression, gradient boost, light boost, extreme gradient boost, random forest and cat boost and the categorical boost or cat boost had the best performance and we use it as the learning algorithm and then we apply three shot method an approach to, an approach based on oh, fair coalition game theory and because the benefit is easy to interpret fast to compute and has nice mathematical properties such as additivity which will help us to solve the multi-level reliability problem used uh, several data sources to enrich our data set. So the historical data, uh, historical data, uh, the available data is, uh, in MongoDB, uh, GTFS static, so Google Elevation API um, to map the topology, the National Institute for uh, Meteorology and the city open data website and the engineering traffic company. We also computed uh, additional features by combining data from different sources, um, such as bus stop spacing or comfort index or passenger per kilometer. Uh, feature engineering uh, is a crucial step in analyzing and getting familiar with feature uh, distributions and segmentation. So, it's crucial if the transit agent is thinking to, to, to apply the same method. So pay attention at the feature engineering so we can save time in, in the future. <laughs> as, we see, as we can see, a large scale model running in production needs a coordination uh, across several city departments. So we have data from uh, meteorology data and traffic, uh, traffic data. So we need to coordinate all these data sets. We selected 216 buses that covered the main roads, bus corridors, subway, and radio station for our simulation. We tried to keep the same proportion of bus frequency and a representative sample of the demand. And why 216 buses uh, at routes? Uh, after many simulations, we noticed that a careful bus routes selection uh, based on some criteria could capture the whole system dynamic. So in this case, 15% uh, 15 bus routes, then we could optimize data storage and computational running time. So we develop algorithm to identify key routes and, and the system. So to recap, the reliability measures uh, every figure has six charts, so two rows and three columns. The first column, uh, the first row represents measures that contain mean or median internally. So it's part of the equation. The information is a hint for the learning algorithm, and that's why the performance is better on the top row of all figures. And oh, I forgot to mention that MAP stands for mean absolute percentage error. So a well-known model validation score in machine learning. Uh, now we need to use two different hats. So the computer scientists and the transportation engineers. So if you show the map score to a computer scientist, they say that the model is not good enough because map is above 20%, which is a common threshold. However, uh, as a transportation engineer, so we know empirical transit data are hard to work and extremely noisy. Then the first rule tells us that the model can be improved to get more accurate predictions. Moreover, uh, in our model, we did not tune the, the model's hyperparameters. So yeah, some space to 
improve the, the, the result. The low frequency scored higher map on the top row and perform it poorly uh, for their variation only measures. So low frequency has some characteristics that explain a higher variability. The number of trips per day is low and highly impacted by exogenous uh, variables such as traffic condition, weather, and topology, for example. And low frequency buses correspond to a minimal percentage of system demand in Sao Paulo. However, those routes attain places with low accessibility, so they are really important. We also observed uh, a special trend for, for the wait time measure, the prediction error decreased towards the, the, the destination, whereas the travel time is the opposite. So the difficulty in predicting the wait time at the first control point might be caused uh, by irregular dispatching. And from the origin, uh, sorry, uh, dispatch from the origin and the travel time due to delay accumulation. So in the end, so yeah, he accumulated the, the delay in the end of the trip. Once we calculated the tree shot for each feature, uh, we could aggregate them into categories. On the left-hand side, we see that even though the transit agent significantly impacts the wait time measures, it does not correspond to a 100% impact from variability. For the overall result, uh, agent service category was between 40 to 60%. Uh, for the wait time measures and between 30 to 50% for the travel time measures. In the case of Sao Paulo, topology had a significant impact between 30 to 35% variability explanation. When you look at frequency segmentation, the first row, uh, the charts are pretty similar. However, EWT and RBT for the low frequency servers were highly impacted by topology demand, weather, traffic, and weekday. So the exogenous, the uh, variables. So well, it ranges between 70 to 80% impact. So this means that delays are not solely the transit agent's fault and quantify its impact can help to understand and communicate better the factors impacting service reliability. Although not covering the presentation, all measures um, can be aggregated from the singular prediction to the whole system uh, uh, perspective. So this is possible because three shaft values standardize the data set and we can generate multi-level distributions for each feature and obtain the moments of the function. So large data sets have the benefit of visualized patterns and gain insights into trended data. Moreover, the method provides a way to compare CDs and identify general aspects of service reliability. We use the data set from Sao Paulo, quantify the features and found that even though I just as a service was the top category explaining weight and travel time variability, we could also uh, notice that exogenous categories were at least 40% influenced. Trusted agents can benefit directly from this framework, framework by applying additional features or reliability measures and quantify its influence on the transit system. The service delay comprises a set of factors partially controlled by the transit agents and can support uh, decision making on quality service. So the next step is numerous. So we listed two feasible one, ones from academic perspective, a city comparison, and from the transit agent's perspective uh, to aggregate features and evaluate model stability. So thank you for being here today. And I really appreciate that you took the time to be here and listen to my presentation. Thank you. Thank you so much, Diego. Uh, indeed, a very interesting study. It's probably one of the um, biggest reliability studies that I've seen with such uh, data that really was based on a huge amount of data uh, across the system and not just uh, one or two routes. Um, and the finding of 40% um, of the reliability issues to be attributed to exogenous variables is an interesting one. Do you expect that this would also be the case, for example, here in, in, in Toronto? Um, like the effect of exogenous variables would be uh, that high on reliability? No, I don't think so because uh, each city has a, a different route design or topologies. So I think that exogenous uh, variables can impact differently for each city. 
and probably you can have some similarities between cities, but uh, I think this is the next step. So I think it would be really uh, interested to analyze different cities and see how can we compare them in terms of reliability and exogenous and endogenous variables. Okay, perfect.